Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another That Chapter. This one is titled The Case of Todd Chance. This was actually suggested to me by a subscriber. I'm really excited. I love getting suggestions. All right, let's go ahead and get into the story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, come up with something special. Oh, don't know a lot about this one. Hmm, let's get... Nervous. I'm, I'm, let's get nervous. Because I'm a little nervous going into this one. You know what I mean? There, there, there's no other thing. It, it literally says, the case of Todd Chance. I don't know nothing else. And, and that worries me. Alright, let's just go ahead and get into it. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're going to Bakersfield, California, to talk about Todd Chance. Todd Chance was a chancer, and he shouldn't have taken a chance in August 2013. Yeah. You'd think that, um, after doing this for a few years, I'd be better at introducing videos, yet here we are. Uh, Todd Chance, text messages you'd slap a ham to. The main issue in this old case is, did she question mark, or didn't she question mark? What else do you need to know? Let's give it a go. I don't even know what that means. Did she or did she? It's not that difficult, is it? Todd Chance and Leslie Janae Chance, who mostly went by Janae, married in 1996. They had met when they both worked at the same pharmacy. Janae had a daughter from okay. a previous relationship and Todd would raise her like, like his own daughter, along with his two actual own daughters he would have with Janae. Todd of Bakersfield, California, to pay the bills he worked in the trucking industry. By 2013, he had worked in it for over a decade and a half. But in his free time, he was all about, you know the old beep beep vroom vroom. <sighs> his Mrs. Janae, she worked in education. She worked for the Greenfield Union School District for 16 years as a teacher, academic coach, and assistant principal, before becoming a beloved principal, drop the assistant at Fairview Elementary School. And that's, you know, uh, where they were until a hot day in late August 2013 rolled around. Uh oh. That morning, around 9am on the 25th of August, on an almond grove 11 miles away from the channel. That's what almonds look like before you they, they go to Blue Diamond? I didn't know that. Why are they so fuzzy? That's a boat. Look like a fucked up peach. Lay the body of Todd. The 45-year-old had been shot dead. What? Janae and Todd's family were then uh, well, informed and interviewed. Janae would say that that day, twas a Sunday, she'd been up early to get some work done as the school term had just begun. Yeah. And she had seen Todd that- Yeah, teachers and principals, oh yeah, they don't. They have a horse. I have three kids. They act like me. I feel bad for all teachers. But no, like, teachers, they, they, they do. They've, they got to make out their plans for like the school year and all kinds of stuff, man. It's crazy. And then you also got to think like some teachers, they, they teach kids with like special needs and stuff. And whew, I can see it. Teachers have to get up early, make sure everything's covered. I mean, you don't want your te your kid being taught by the underachieving teacher. You know what I mean? Yeah. That morning, about an hour before he was found. 7.30 to 8 this morning, so I left. That morning, Todd had told his wife, Janae, that he was heading off to a gun show with his dad. And Janae was like, yep, grand, I'll see you later. And was doing the old, 
clackety, uh, whatever. She was working away that morning as he was out the door. Clackety the clack. daughters then got up, you know, and pottered around until, well, a few hours later, the police would be the bearers of bad news. The family was devastated, you know, they couldn't believe he had been murdered. It was, um, you know, unfathomable. It seemed that Todd had been shot twice at close range, and then dumped at that almond grove. His shoes were clean, so he hadn't, you know, been walking around the... I have a question. It's probably kind of stupid question. But say something like that happens. Like, it doesn't have to be an almond whatever orchard, or just like, you say, a place where you can get peaches or apple orchards or, you know places to have oranges and stuff like that. If someone was taken out there and murdered and say like actually murdered out there, not like killed somewhere else and dropped there, but taken there and murdered and there's blood like on the ground, are they allowed to still use that? Like the crops around that can stuff get always wash your vegetables before you eat them. Firm. Also, no blood or bullets there. His wallet and cell phone also remained, so it wasn't the robbery. So that's, you know, one clue, I guess, or, or lead. The second was that his car was not there. It wasn't at the farm, and he had a really nice car. He had a Mustang that he loved like his baba. The third was that someone uh, was lying. See, Todd's parents would come to Bakersfield, and they'd, they'd be like, Todd's dad? What? Gun show? Never heard of it. What are you talking about? The last you heard that you spoke to those at Ben Show this morning. I haven't talked to him today. There was also no reason for him to be in that part of town, but then uh, that doesn't really matter because it seemed like he had been dumped there. He hadn't actually gone there. But he was Damn. left in like an obvious place. His body was found pretty quickly. They said that, you know, he didn't seem, he wasn't dead long when they got to him. Leaving someone on a farm is only smart if you want them to be found. The next thing they learned was that one of his guns, and he was a big gun lover, like him going to a gun show would, wouldn't be out of character. One right of his guns that he kept at home. Yeah. So, the dad was not supposed to, so, either he was doing something shady, or the old lady is lying, right? Is that where we're at? Either he lied to her or she lied about the situation. Ooh, it's getting thick already. I hope we get an insurance dance. Was missing. And one of them's missing. Yes. And that is the... The 38. The and the A big old 38. Todd had been shot with a 38 and his gun was not found at the crime scene. So we got a man found with, say, no, uh, he had no bad habits. He didn't hang out with, you know, unscrupulous characters found dead on an almond grove 11 miles west of Bakersfield. He was killed with what appeared to be his own gun, and that gun was now missing. And the last time he was seen is about only two hours before he was found, telling his wife he was going to a gun show with his dad a gun show his dad knew nothing about, so he was lying. Somebody here was lying. So where did he actually go? How did he get there if his car was nowhere to be found? Who did he meet? Which in turn caused him to meet his end. Hey, do we got cell phone records and shit? We'll find out, bruh. Last known location and all that good shit. It wouldn't take long for Todd's beloved car to be found. It was discovered Ooh. that same day, abandoned in a neighborhood 20 miles away from where he had been left. And it wasn't in a nice neighborhood. This added to, uh, you know, well, it's a bit more here than just a simple carjacking or robbery or whatever. There's obviously definitely something more here going on than just a bang bang. For one thing, it's a beautiful car. You know, it's a slap the hood and listen to that baby purr. Worth a fair few dollar dues. So leaving it, you know, uh, you, you, whoever left it there was hoping it wouldn't be left there for long. And not only that, the gun was found inside the car under the mat. So, uh, yeah, whoever did this just really, just really didn't give a shit. Ah, sure, be grand, don't worry about it. 
So now the investigation was in full swing, and the, the investigators decided to have a look at his phone, which was found. What was all over the gun in the seats? Was that like old blood spatter or something? Was he killed in the car? Because the, the, if that was a if that was an actual picture of the car, the car didn't look all that messed up. Like it didn't look like anyone had bust out any windows. I mean, it, it looked in pristine condition. Man, this is weird. Like, if, if, if it was the Ola, if it was his old lady, for one, being a principal, she would not be that stupid, right, to use his own gun. Just leave his car there, the gun in under the floor mat, right? There's no way she could be that dumb. We've walked, yeah, okay, I'm just, yeah, probably. Found right beside his body, you know, they popped it open, had a goo. On his phone, they found some, uh, slap ham worthy pics. They were, ooh, hot. From a woman who most certainly was not Janae, obviously. It seemed at that point that Todd could have been having an affair. And that was why he had lied that morning about going to the gun show. Oh, Not only that, folk who lived near shame. where Todd's car was found say they saw a middle-aged woman leave it there around the same time Todd's body was found that morning on the 25th. Nearby police found CCTV of this person. Following the direction the person was walking in, they found more CCTV. They saw her change clothing, discard items in the bag, which they were guessing, you know, were, were used to clean the car, clean the crime scene. And then they saw her use a payphone at a Walmart and leave town in a taxi. That looks like they also lady. found video of Todd's Mustang going to and from the Almond Grove to where it was found. And that woman whose racy pics were found on Todd's phone, they discovered who she was, and it was an old flame of Todd's, a woman named Carrie. She was someone he had been with in the 90s before getting with Janae. And she was, she was like the one that got away, you know what I mean? Got away for like a bit, because now it seemed like Todd was you know, kicking things off once again with That's this Carrie. Stupid. So was that Carrie then in the CCTV? Well, no, detectives didn't think it was, didn't think it was Carrie. Looks so like so what the police did was they invited Janae down because it looks like his old lady's got like actual dark hair. This lady looks like it's a little bit dyed. She's, you know, it happens. And the hair looked dark. And do you remember the video whenever the, his, the, at the school where she was handing out something to someone else? Kind of the same body, the way she holds her body. You know what I mean? I think it's, it looks like his old lady. To the police station under the pretense of, you know, getting Todd's car back. The police were done with the Mustang. And while she was there, they were like, hey, Jay, here, come here for a sec. Come on, have a go with this, right? CCTV, did you, did you recognize that person? They asked her if she recognized. They asked her if she recognized herself. Janae yes. was arrested. Yes. Yeah. And charged with murder. There are new details this morning following the arrest of a local elementary school principal. Bro, I told you. I've been telling you all this this whole time. I have watched so many of these. I am getting way too good at predicting what the fuck's going on, homie. Who's now the main suspect in the murder of her own husband. We do believe she is the person who drove his vehicle to that neighborhood and left it in that neighborhood and then walked away from the vehicle. Within the last 90 minutes, we've learned that Leslie Chance was booked on first-degree murder charges five days after her husband, Todd Chance, was found brutally murdered. This is heartbreaking uh, for everyone, you know. Yeah. My client lost a husband, the father of her children, her children lost a father, his family lost a son and a brother. There's no upside for anyone in a case like this. Detectives oh. were absolutely sure from her mannerisms and her reactions that she was responsible for Todd Chance's death. The CCTV footage, although you can't see the woman's face, they were positive it matched Janae. 
She was arrested four days after Todd's death. However, she wouldn't be inside for long. Only four days after she was arrested, the prosecutor would uh, decline to, to file charges. As they basically said, CCTV is not really good enough, you know, so she'd be let go. Frankly, the police shouldn't have even arrested her in the first place. They were going, you know, off a hunch. And they were using CCTV footage that looked like it was filmed on a potato. That the prosecutor said, hey. the jury's not going to go for that. The district... Hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you get enough people up there, you could have made them believe it was Bigfoot. He just wasn't a good enough lawyer, you know what I mean? The attorney's office is sending the case of Leslie Chance back to the sheriff's office for further investigation. People were on the side of Janae. Her character isn't, isn't that of what they're blaming her to be. My kids love her. My kids are excited that she's going to be out. I just don't, I seriously wouldn't picture her ever doing anything like that. Seriously, not the type of person. Until she's proven guilty, I'm not going to believe it. A lovely principal at an elementary school? Did she uh, do it? No way, Jose. In fact, her daughters are like, this is bullshit. One of Janae's daughters would say she had seen Janae working at a computer at 9.30 a.m., which, if it was her in the CCTV, would not leave her much time to get home at all. And Janae, of course, said she was working on the computer all morning, and her alibi, you know, was, well, was clearly supported by her daughter. However, she was still in the police crosshairs. They believed she knew that Todd was sending salacious texts and was mad as hell. So, did the police have blinders on? Could it have been Carrie? Well, they did speak to her, and she said they'd actually stopped sending texts, and it never went beyond texts. They had stopped months earlier. It didn't look like Harry in the video, and she was also proven to be a hundred miles away that morning. And so the investigation continued. Not looking good, is it? And now, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to roll your eyes into the back of your head and have your mind blown out the goddamn airlock because... Uh, yeah, many of them taken out in Todd's name, about, um, half a million. So, Janae wouldn't get a penny, at least in the short term. The old, uh, Slayer statute and the police, uh, weren't quite sure she wasn't the Slayer. But days would turn to weeks, would turn to months, would turn to years without any arrests. Money would slowly trickle out from the insurance companies into Janae's pocket. But Todd's parents, sure Janae had killed Todd, would go to court to ensure Todd's money went to the kids, not her. Yes. Which, the investigation I mean, had now slowed like to a crawl. You know, it was getting colder and colder. Until in 2015, a picture showed up. They had done a full search of the Chance household, documented everything and, you know, what have you. Doing the old, um, police work, I believe it's called. And this picture caught the eye. Look at that. It's the Chances of the CSI experience in Las Vegas. I'm sure it's an absolutely stellar exhibition. Look at the joy on their faces. You might even insert shit pun here. <laughs> It seems they'd gone to Las Vegas the summer before Todd's death. The investigators uh, thought that was interesting because it seemed that whoever that was, was in that CCTV that footage, they, uh, they knew a little bit about CSI. So the investigator went to Las Vegas, had a goo. And in that uh, experience, one of the experiences was about a woman who murdered her husband and dumped him in the desert. Inspiring. Different things from that experience seemed to, well, they seemed familiar. Damn. Using a payphone, changing your shoes to avoid detection. Weird. Almost like, almost like things Todd's killer had done. It's kind of funny, you know, not in a ha-ha way. By this time, they also kinda had like Janae's fingerprints way. and DNA from Todd's car. Okay, you know, that's fine. It was her husband's car, so hers would be, you know, expected to be found there. You would figure. But her fingerprints were on the driver's side door, and she said she never drove that car and couldn't even drive a manual. They also found this picture of Janae with the very murder weapon. 
one of Janae's daughters was brought in to confirm it was her in the CCTV, something she would later regret. Is that your mother? They had also gotten more CCTV of that taxi and where it went. How about very close to where the chances lived? They also found this CCTV from a few weeks before Todd's death, of Janae walking into a Walmart and asking where the payphone is, the same payphone the killer would later use. Janae also had two cell phones, there's no reason for her to go back to the 1970s and use a payphone. Then, finally, Janae's laptop that she used for work Technicians were able to confidently say it had not been used on the morning of the 25th of August 2013. Janae had not been working. She had been. She could have been anywhere. Maybe in an almond grove, maybe walking around town wearing a lot of clothes to disguise yeah. her figure. Three years ago, Leslie Jean Chance was arrested and considered the sole suspect in the death of her husband. She was arrested uh, again, and now she's in jail without bail. She's set to be arraigned later today, this afternoon at 3 o'clock. We developed enough, in our minds, enough information and evidence, which uh, makes us I mean, it's looking better. Uh, in our belief. I mean, it is looking better. I the the potato camera shit that that is a little reachy, but yet the daughter breaking down. Yeah, that's my mom. That's my mom. That's my mom. That's my mom. It didn't help that any either. I mean, man, this motherfucker going get it. She going get it. She going get it. That, that Leslie Chance is responsible for Todd's murder. It was on the 1st of December 2016 that Janae would be arrested again. Her trial would begin three years later, in 2019. I anticipate through the evidence in this case that money was not the underlying reason for the murder of Todd Chance. In fact, I anticipate that you are going to hear that Todd Chance had rekindled a romance, a, a texting type of romance with his old flame. You're gonna hear that when she watched those videos that she began sobbing uncontrollably, put her head down on the table. And when the detective asked her, is that your mother? She said, yes, yes. And then the detective asked her, was that your mother in all of the videos that I've shown you? And her response was, yes. I anticipate when all of that evidence is presented to you, that you will find that the defendant, Leslie Janae Chance, through her actions, prepared a very involved and guilty. detailed lesson plan on how to kill her husband, how to murder him. There are always two sides. To every story. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt is proof that leaves you with an abiding conviction that the charge is true. And unless the evidence proves Janae guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, she's entitled to acquittal. You must find her not guilty. The prosecution would say that on the morning of the 25th of August, they'd gone out for a drive together, Todd and Janae, and she had killed him with his own gun, dumped his body in an almond grove, drove to a neighborhood cleaned the car and then legged it. She had done this because he was flirting with another woman. Not only that, apparently in those saucy hubba hubba texts Carrie and Todd were sending each other, they were also shite talking Janae, which then, you know, would make steam come out of her ears. And then also, she wanted his life insurance, of course she did. And, you know, she was also just kind of sick of him. The defense went with well, that was a shitty investigation that aimed at Janae and never left her. They had already arrested her and had to let her go, so therefore they really wanted to get her. They didn't want to look stupid. And one of her daughters said she saw her that morning even. Todd, Todd had two gunshot wounds, both like located in the upper right chest area. One bullet went through his right hand and then penetrated Todd's chest. The gunshot came from a close range. 
Damn, bro. Janae never went through Todd's phone. She had no knowledge of the texts. And regardless, there was no affair to begin with. It had stopped months before, and it was only ever just texts. And that couldn't have been her in the footage. The body type was off. Janae wore glasses, was blind without them, didn't have contacts, and didn't have prescription sunglasses. So that couldn't have been her. Or that's what she said. And then the prosecution brought up proof she owned two boxes of contact lenses. So that's embarrassing. This is an innocent person. She did not kill her husband. Money was, was there, it was an issue, but it was definitely a secondary one. The primary one was Carrie Williams. This was a murder committed out of jealousy. You're an innocent person. And you're screaming from the top of your lungs, I didn't do this. The things that the defendant did to prepare for this plan are absolutely evidence, not just of identity, but also of premeditation. What was Janae's motive? They keep coming up. We knew this, we knew this, we knew this, then show it. Show it that she knew. After eight whole days of deliberation, Janae was so positively sure they'd find her innocent, she even asked her daughters to make sure they had her favorite snacks ready for her. Well, she won't be eating them. Superior Court of California County of Kern Metropolitan Division. The people of the state of California versus Leslie Janae Chance. First count. We, the jury, impaneled to try the above entitled case, find the defendant, Leslie Janae Chance, guilty of a felony to wit, murder in the first degree. The jury found her guilty and sentenced her to 50 years. Knowing she's innocent, so I am shocked by the decision. Um, I don't even, I, I truly came here hoping, thinking that it was a not guilty verdict. Uh, and when they read it, I'm just numb. I, I don't understand this entire case. The motive happened to be supposedly because he was having an affair to which every time that she was spoken to, interviewed, she had no knowledge. There's not a single person nor text or anything saying that she ever learned about the affair. The motive asked for money was asinine, if not ridiculous, from the get-go. And they even showed pictures of her uh, with her belly hanging out. And supposedly that was a motive because they were seeing pictures of his ex fiance from about 20 years ago showing nude photographs and then supposedly my client knew about photos that depicted her in a bad light which somehow angered her so much that she did this and it I just there's just no motive. There's absolutely nothing. And everything they kept trying to argue, we kept refuting. Janae's daughter don't think it was her, that she did it. They believe her to be innocent. The daughter who confirmed in the police interview it was Janae in the CCTV would later walk that on back. I deeply believe in my heart my mother did not do this. I will fight you to the day I die to prove this. My mom needs to be home with us. She needs to watch me be a mother to my four babies. She needs to watch my sisters grow up into the women they are becoming. Mom, I love you with every ounce of my being. In fact, they say it's not even a woman in the CCTV. Most others would say they're wrong. Reinforced when Janae tried to get a new trial and was denied. But let me know your thoughts on whether Janae deserves to be behind bars or not. As many others believe too, including those who lost their father. Her getting out of prison was a chance that would not be taken, while Todd was a chance that was. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. 
Thank you so much for having me, Mike. As always, it's fun to be here, dude. Like, I enjoy it. All right. Now, could... I mean... Let's just say she didn't do it. The lady kind of looks like her, like... Man, oh... Like, was her fingerprints on, like, the steering wheel and everything? Like, it looked like she had drove, or was it just on the driver's side door? Like, I didn't hear no more other than she had fingerprints on the driver's side door. You know something? The lady has gotten into the vehicle and opened the door everywhere. Like, it's like, hey, baby, will you get in on my side and grab my keys? I I think they found my pocket. Yeah, she'll do it. Hey, hey baby, will you... Whatever, like... I mean, a lot of the evidence sounds iffy. But I guess, I mean, if you get enough iffy evidence together, it can make something. I mean, I'm not saying she's innocent. I definitely ain't saying she's innocent at all. I definitely ain't saying she's guilty. I'm just saying I can't make that decision. Like, I would feel awful if I was on that jury. Like, I, I wouldn't have been able to, I would have been like, I don't know. Because, like I said, like, yeah, okay. She doesn't wear contacts. I don't wear contacts either, but I have a box of contacts. I don't know why. I would never put them in. They're old as shit, but I do have a pair. Had a pair whenever I was younger, too. Never wore them. Wore them one time, actually. Never wore them again. Will never wear them again. I'm just saying, man, like sometimes things line up and it just looks shady. Sometimes things line up and they is shady. I don't know which one this one is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Or if you would like, go on over and check out the new Discord. I'm going to be linking it in the description. And if there's any time you guys want to get on there and chat, it, it's open for everyone. You can come on in, chat amongst each other, chat with me. I hop in there as much as I can. And I appreciate everyone that hopped on there the other day and wished me a happy birthday. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate and bless all of you. All right. I really enjoyed today's story. If you all enjoyed today's story as much as I did, please go down there. Leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. While you're down there, going over and slap that. Excuse me. Subscribe button. No. Hold on. I think I went dumb. As of it, no. I forgot my outro. If you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there and leave a thumbs up. While you're down there, go on over, slap that subscribe button, become part of the Bill 5000 Nation. We do some crazy shit here, bro. If you want to know when that crazy shit happens, just ding that bell. It might work for you. It might not. It probably won't. If it do, it'll be late, but that's fine. That's fine. We can be late bloomers if you want. And then, you know, if, if you want them late bloomers, come on in there, jump in and on the premiere, go over in the live chat, be like, hey, Bill, I got dinged. It was like an hour late. I know the premiere's over, but still, I want you to know, I was dinged, and it was so good. Leave and like and dip, and that's all you got to do, bro. That's all you got to do. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Man. See... It's a good thing she wasn't wearing no Bill for a Thousand merch. We'd known who the fuck she was right off the bat. Because you can't hide in that stuff, son. Everyone sees it.